Today you're in for a real treat. The Fuji X-S10 has landed in my lap, or rather my hands. I have it for a week. I'm gonna put it through its paces today and the following days. Um, I'm gonna share how that experience goes and give you my first impressions. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. I recently compared this camera to the X-T4 and the outcome's clear. The X-T4 falls on the professional side dual card slots, higher video specs, for example, and the XS10 falls more on the novice side. However, those are just words, and once I got my hand on the XS10, you know, reality hits the road, the rubber meets the road, and so this experience is gonna help me decide if the XS10 can change my mind. So here are 10 lessons I learned from using the XS10. All right, so we're out at the Venice Skate Rink and Darlene's testing her new Sony camera. And uh, I am just uh, testing the, the audio on the Fuji X-S10. Darlene's here. Say hi, Darlene. She's there. And uh, so we were right there filming. I was doing slow motion, 120 frames per second. So we'll see how that comes out. Lesson number one, what is the PSAM dial? First thing I did was shoot some still images. And the reason this was not as easy as I thought is I wasn't used to the PSAM dial on the top where you can choose from program mode, speed priority mode, aperture prior mode, and full manual mode. The thing that sets this Fuji apart from all others is this PSAM dial, program, speed priority, aperture priority, and manual. It's meant to compete with cameras more like the Sony. This camera, ha camera has been tagged as unusual for a Fuji camera. In fact, the Fuji rep who loaned it to me said it's supposed to be a competitor of Sony and it's unusual for uh, Fuji to have this PSAM dial. So it did take me a while to get used to that, but ultimately I just left on manual mode like all my cameras. Lesson number two, film simulation dial. Now, uh, another dial on the top that I did make use of, uh, but not initially, was set up to easily flick through the film simulations, which is pretty cool and a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't use this feature right away. In fact, I didn't notice it because the dial is, is uh, it's not labeled, but I would use the Q menu and then uh, this uh, command dial to choose film simulations. But if you just flick through this, it shows up right on the screen and it, this feature definitely highlights film simulations. Um, and film simulations are a strength of Fuji, it's what they're known for. But I'll just say that um, I think this is a fun feature and it highlights those choices, but probably if you're used to Fuji, you have one or two and you're probably not gonna mix them up. Maybe, maybe like I use Classic Chrome and Acros uh, and I might switch between those on a shoot, but you're probably not just trying out random film simulations when you go out for a shoot. Um, unless you're brand new to film simulations, then it's super helpful. Regardless, it was actually easier to choose between film simulations and I like that feature. Lesson number three, the mic jack was a little fussy and the first time I used it, I actually didn't have, there's a tiny little rubber uh, thing right here. And uh, so we were right there filming. All right, so I discovered the mic was not plugged all the way in, so I'm doing this test just to compare it. The shot on the beach with the mic not plugged in, which means I was using the internal mic and this shot. How's the audio compare? With the Movo shotgun mic on it. A tiny rubber flap, and the first time I used it, the mic jack wasn't plugged in all the way uh, when I thought it was. Let's just say that's my mistake. Um, the next time I plugged it in all the way, so I have samples of both audio for you. Lesson number four, and this is audio problems. Uh, there's no headphone jack to listen to the replay. This is part of owning a smaller and more beginner or entry level camera. Chalk it up to that. Lesson five, easy to access movie recording. I like that the shutter button in movie mode hits record, but if you wanna dive into filming video while shooting photos, there's a dedicated movie recording button right there. Lesson number six, high frame rate recording. I actually found it very easy to enable high frame rate recording. You hit menu, you hit movie recording, then tab down a couple from movie, movie quality settings and toggle it on or off. At 1080p, you can get super slow-mo 120 and 240. I didn't even test the 240. Lesson number seven, the fully articulating screen. Yes, yes, this Fuji yes. is different uh, than most others. Is it has a fully articulating screen here, like this, and you can also shoot um, portrait orientation and get that view, so you can get very low to the ground. 
and see your shots easily in that screen. Uh, so that's awesome. You know I like the fully articulating screen. It's a great tool getting the great shot at a great angle for stills. And it's a great tool for getting the composition and checking focus if you're filming yourself like so, like this. You can film yourself and see yourself. So that's a great benefit. It's very easy. Lesson number eight, the screen allows for shotgun mic placement. So you can have this here, shotgun here. I can mount the shotgun mic on top and use the flipped out screen. On the XE4, a top mounted mic blocks the flip up screen. Lesson number nine, not all IBIS units are created equal. Yes, IBIS helps stabilize uh, your handheld video. Now with the XE4, I definitely just avoided the lack of stabilization by shooting on a tripod only, like now. With the XS10, I did shoot handheld video, um, of course, because it's IBIS, it's an exciting tool, and I was a little bit disappointed. The IBIS is not as good as I was expecting. I mean, shot with the Fuji X-T4 and the Canon R5, but I have to keep in mind, I rarely shot handheld vlog type footage with those. And in those cases with those cameras, I didn't really have a wide enough angle lens to shoot vlog style content. Um, the stabilized footage I shot was more promo type content. So a test for this will be to start filming promo type content, like slow, stable, handheld movements and see how the stabilization does. Uh, but for the vlog style content, it wasn't perfect and uh, I was a little bit disappointed. But I have to make sure I'm shooting the exact same style, so it's not truly a fair comparison yet to the X-T4 or the Canon R5. Lesson 10, don't judge a camera based on specs alone. For example, the beefiness of the grip doesn't really show up on the specs, but it's much more comfortable than an XE4. It allows you to shoot longer, it leads to creating more content and to be more comfortable while shooting. Um, so I, I want to make sure I show you samples of what we did uh, out in Santa Monica and Venice, the, the 120 uh, slow-mo that I, I created. Um, I did mostly video, but there are some, some shots driving around. Uh, so you'll see some still photography, but I am going to make several more videos that, for this week while I have it. So far, this camera has proved me wrong, it has proved me wrong. And I really think that it's actually worth its weight. Uh, so I have to, I have to puzzle that over since I invested in XE4, uh, as a replacement that X 100 V, but this is kind of like, it's kind of like a golden child. If this is a YouTube hobbyist camera, it's on point. You don't need the X, uh, T4, I don't think, but uh, I'll be putting it through its paces. Uh, so some of the things I'm going to try is portraits, um, portraits with uh, off-camera flash. I'm going to do some promo video content uh, to check the stabilization and the video quality. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know some other things you're interested in knowing about this camera. Peace. So far, I like it has a nice fat grip. It's a little heavier than I'm used to. My wife's trying to get somewhere and she hit me. Domestic violence, it's abuse. All right, now I got the mic plugged in. We're outside, so we got a little traffic noise and you can hear uh, how this mic does. Uh, this is Eterno Cinema. I'm on F11, so it's really bright out. I didn't have an ND filter, so I was just using the F-stop uh, to cut the noise. This is it. We about to 